it's also can be where you can timeline jump to. And I had an experience <clears throat> back in the 80s where I actually did a timeline jump and I was reading a book and I thought I would just try to give this a go. Now, I didn't understand what happened, but I know the minute it happened that I had done a timeline jump because we live in simultaneous time. We are living all of our different lives at the same time. So when you do a timeline jump, you can go back into a past life at that moment while you're in this present life, you can change something from your past and it will come across every single one of your timelines. And that's what I did. Today, I wanted to talk about quantum jumping or quantum leaping, whatever the terms are, everybody's saying the same thing, but different terminology. And I'm studying this a little bit more because I think this is really important of where we're going and it's partly what I keep saying as well. And the main thing about quantum jumping and quantum leaping that I'm discovering is about your mindset. Again, when we have the mindset set the way that we want, we're also asking for guidance. We're asking for help, you know, dead relatives can help us angels can help us your guides can help us that type of thing but you're also creating that future vision of yourself so and zach put it together in such a beautiful way last week when she's talked about how we were a web where is it the spider creating the web and it grows out and out and out and as we go out further we're creating more of a quantum leap because we're touching something far out that we are unaware of, but yet we created that and we're bringing in that vibrational energy towards us. It's also can be where you can timeline jump to. And I had an experience <clears throat> back in the eighties where I actually did a timeline jump and I was reading a book and I thought I would just try to give this Ago. Now, I didn't understand what happened, but I know the minute it happened that I had done a timeline jump because we live in simultaneous time. We are living all of our different lives at the same time. So when you do a timeline jump, you can go back into a past life at that moment while you're in this present life, you can change something from your past and it will come across every single one of your timelines. And that's what I did. I don't remember exactly what it was back then, but I just remember the moment it happened that I went back and I shifted something and it made a shift inside of me. I could feel it. Everything kind of changed. And that was probably my first experience of what quantum jumping was, even though we didn't have that terminology back then. But it was pretty exciting because when we look at the concept of simultaneous times and, and part of the concept of quantum jumping is that you are going into your future self or you're going into another life where you actually have what you want, but you don't have it in this lifetime. And so you're taking that opportunity to jump into another timeline, a future self, that type of thing. I look at it the way I have been envisioning it and i've been reading more about quantum leaping and jumping and understanding a little bit more and what they're saying is basically it's your mindset when i brought in my higher self several months ago part of that was is because i saw a higher bigger version of myself that i wanted to bring forward and when she showed up I leaned into her. Now, part of that, you could look at that, that that was another quantum leap because there was something I saw out there that I was striving to become and I was becoming her. And when she came in, then there's this whole new concept that started to formulate around me of like, well, if I did that, what does this look like? Because that was so easy to do. And all it was, was a future self. I just knew what I wanted to look like, how I wanted to be, how I wanted to feel. 
And I created and lived as if I was that person. And that's partly when we're manifesting something that's living as if. What does your future self look like? What does she think? How does she feel? How does she respond or he to environmental situations? You know, what's going on inside your environment? What's going on inside of your head? How is that person actually changing and doing things differently? It's a very quiet, subtle way. But if you're being very conscious and present in that moment, you can actually see yourself make those changes. And when I was reading this book, Quantum Success, the one thing that they said that I completely forgot about, and I mean, I asked my guides and I ask spirit all the time, I'm still creating that future self. I'm still looking for what's the block in me that's not allowing something to come in. Part of it is that it's just not time. Part of it, it could be there's something deep inside. There's a wound that I haven't discovered yet. And it's all okay because a lot of times it's the questions, it's the quality of the questions that we have to ask. So when I was reading this, they talked about that our higher self is out here in the ether, so to speak, but they're connected to us. And we're the physical manifestation of a higher aspect of ourselves because we are diff there's different soul levels. And so our oversoul is the one that's over seeing us and it's having like what the creator does like we're a piece of the creator so the creator is learning about himself through each and every single one of us and how we do what we do in our life well we also have an oversoul that does the same thing where it has little souls running around like the creator i mean this is part of our evolution too on a spiritual level and as our oversoul is creating and manifesting and guiding and watching and taking care of us that are on the physical plane, they're also learning and growing and evolving. So when, and they have access to what we don't have access because we're not supposed to have access, but they have no boundaries or um, limitations. They, they're not in physical form. <clears throat> their vision is broader and they see more than we do. And it's suggested that you talk to your higher self. You ask them to help you. And I do that a lot it is asking for whatever guidance that I need, whatever I think I need. And I allow it to come in. So when I tell people, well, I'm just allowing, well, it's because I'm asking and then you have to receive it because it's a giving and receiving. And as this comes in, I go up higher on a vibrational frequency, which again means I'm going out further in the web, so to speak. I could be going up higher in the web because, you know, we start at the center and it kind of goes in this circle all the way around. So as we're evolving, but that also gives me the opportunity that as I'm building that part of me up, that means there's another element out there. Now I look at quantum leaping, quantum jumping, not necessarily moving into my future self as much as I look at jumping into another timeline to see what, who I am in another time that has everything that I want in this timeline. Because when we're living simultaneously, and I mean, we're talking past to present to future all at one time, and we're learning different things throughout. And as if I change something major here in this lifetime, it affects everything on the outside. Everything gets changed. That's the power that we have. When, when I'm looking at, well, what, this vision of who I want to be become in this lifetime, I'm going out there and I'm looking for what timeline she's in to find her and see what she's living like. Now I actually had, I have to tell you this, this is so funny. I actually did this probably several months ago. I was doing this and I actually jumped into a different timeline on being on this show. I was actually in New York and I was in the building and, and I knew, I knew without a shadow of a doubt at that moment that I had jumped into a future self of just the whole show, 
you know, how I was, how the interaction was going on inside the studio. And I know it's not what it is here, but it was so different there. And it was, it was fun actually in my dream. Cause then I'm like, well, how do I get back? Because when I realized that I had time jumped into another lifetime, I was like, I don't know how to get back. Well, I just fell asleep. So I went back, you know, I went back to sleep and I came back, but it was just an interesting experience because I'm trying my best to understand what this is because spirit has told me you're going to be telling people or teaching people how to do this. Well, I have to learn how to do it if I'm going to teach people how to do it. Now, anything you do in the dream is one thing. It's another thing when you have to bring it into physical conscious awareness into reality and seeing what that goes. But I think the main thing is, is when you're, when you're focusing in on your mindset, you create infinite possibilities to manifest whatever you want. And you have the opportunity to go into another timeline and see if this is something that you want. And this is something that I'm working on practicing right now, but we're going to go ahead and take, take a quick commercial break. Your mindset shapes your reality. With Kathleen Flanagan's Mindset Blueprints, you'll learn powerful techniques to shift your thoughts, break limiting beliefs, and design a life of abundance and success. It's time to reprogram your mind for the life you truly desire. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start building your new blueprint today. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold, brave TV network. I know that this sounds a little far fetched and I'd love to hear any comments that you might have to say, but I also know that these are things that I have studied off and on, not that I fully had the knowledge behind it, but it makes sense because I think that's part of when we're visualizing a future self, what do we want our go what do we want to accomplish our goals, that kind of thing. And I think when we do that, we're being asked to go into our future. And I know that that's, I'm going to be doing that probably really soon here as far as where do I want to be in December of 2025. And we all know it's really hard to, project what you want. I mean, you can say, I want this and this and this, but it goes beyond that. It's about what do you look like? How do you feel? How are you thinking? How do you respond to life? It's, it's very similar to when I brought in that higher self and I'm thinking if I brought this higher self in me, well, how high can I go? And so I do these challenges with myself because I don't know. I'm just doing what I think to do. I'm, I'm exploring and that's partly what we're supposed to be here on this planet doing and exploring. And so when I'm thinking about, well, where do I want to be in 2025? And I just remember the first time I wrote a business plan for awakening spirit, hardest thing I ever did. Oh my God. I thought I was going to die doing a business plan because what did I know? I didn't know anything. I just, guest. And do you know, a year later, when I reread the business plan, everything I put in writing came to pass every bit of it. I didn't look at the business plan throughout the year. I didn't do anything. I just wrote it down and I'm thinking, yeah, this is, and I, in my mind, I really thought that, yeah, this is going to happen. And, and it did but I didn't believe it would happen because it seemed too far fetched and it seemed impossible. And what it showed me is if you're dreaming big, dream bigger, keep dreaming bigger. I have a, I put a check on my desk that has a million dollars made payable to a billion dollars made payable to me. And I thought, well, who cares? Why not? Who says it's not possible? The only one who says I can't do that is me. And I thought that was pretty exciting because it stretches our imagination. It stretches our boundaries. And who says I'm not a billionaire in some other life anyways? So why not dream big? Do I understand what that means on 
many levels? No, not yet. But that means that, but I'm also elevating myself by having that big check sitting on my desk. And I get a kick out of it because it's, you know, you just look at it, you don't pay attention to it. But every time I see that check, it's doing something inside the subconscious part of my mind. It's worming its way in, creating and bringing things to me. And it's very simply, very simple and similar to if we're going to quantum jump or quantum leap into a future aspect of ourselves. So when I'm going to do this 2025 vision of myself, I'm going to look at, well, where, where do I want to be? How much money do I want to have? What's my body weight? What does my hair look like? Is it long? Is it short? Is it this color? Did I change it to something else? What kind of clothes am I wearing? How happy am I? Am I showing a lot more happiness, enthusiasm? What's my customer base, my client base? Do I have more engagement with my, my people? And that's what I look at because money is an energy. So when I look at that billion dollar check, it's not about having a billion dollars. It's about holding the energy of a billion dollars because people do not understand that money is nothing more than an energy. And if I'm going to do a billion dollars worth of anything that means i am reaching a lot of people now i watched the martha stewart documentary and i was pretty blown away by martha stewart okay now i grew up with martha stewart i didn't think much about it but watching her documentary was really very informative about what they did and i'm talking about them okay and we all know who them are and what they did she was the first billionaire woman in a man's world, and they didn't like it at all. And they created a farce to stop her. They succeeded in destroying her business by sending her to prison, but they, dug, they didn't have anything on her the way that they did, but they created something. And when you have enough power and money, you can do that. But the thing that was so interesting about Martha Stewart and being in there, she actually journaled about being in prison for five months. And then she met women and helped these women start when they got out that they could become good people, you know, come out of prison, be rehabilitated, go off and do them. She was teaching them how to be a businesswoman and how to change their mindset. Okay. I think that was pretty powerful. She took lemons and made lemonade out of it. Would I expect anything less of Martha Stewart? No. But what a remarkable story for somebody who came from nothing, who came from abuse. Um, her father didn't have any money and how she just created this life that she created was absolutely amazing. And she was determined. And the part that I thought was so funny, it was that she saw a need and filled it. And she was very aware of her environment and seeing a problem and fixing it. And that's when you want to make that kind of money, that's what you're doing. You're always filling a need where there's a problem. So when she was doing this, what was the thing that she said? And I remember these days of, well, you know, if you want to have meatloaf, just put a can of Campbell soup, chicken, no, cream of mushroom soup on and there's dinner. <laughs> I remember going, oh my God, that's what my mother did. And it was horrible. And then I remember when I was in my twenties and you know, when you're making dinner for yourself for the first time and you're learning how to like do all this cooking thing. And there was a recipe that you put rice in a nine by 13 pan. You put a can of cream of chicken soup with water, chicken on top and put foil on it and bake it for an hour for 350 degrees. And there's dinner and there was dinner. It wasn't too bad, but it was like, this is not how you eat. This is wrong. And, and that's when I started um, getting more into fruits and vegetables and eating differently, even though we weren't in that place fully yet. But it was time to get out of the canned dinners, so to speak. But that was what she started on was the canned dinners. Now, her mom didn't cook like that, but it's what she observed on TV. It's what her neighbors and friends did that their parents did was cooking with Campbell's chicken soup. <laughs> oh God, I think I just, it's so funny to think about some of this stuff sometimes about, you know, the life that I had 
as I was growing up and it was a much simpler time. And I was talking to Zach actually yesterday because we were talking about the wounds um, and the questions that we asked to see, you know, what's the blocks that may be going on because we're working on wanting to create and bring more impact into the world because that's what we feel like that's we're being called to do. And because we're in this election today, so we don't know what's going to happen um, by tomorrow morning, who's going to be the president. We, we don't know yet. Um, so that's, that's another thing of the beginning of the changes that are coming. And I believe firmly that we have the power to make that change, not the government, not the president, not anybody other than us. It comes from us. And the one thing that I read last night, which I thought was very, very powerful, and I never thought of it this way, was when I change my vibrational frequency into more love and happiness and joy and peace, that frequency emanates out into the world where it touches other people because we are all connected. On an energetic level, we are all connected. And if I'm touching people that way and other people who are growing and evolving and wanting to be better people or to provide better for their families, that touches how many other thousands of lives. And that's how we change. So yeah, it's fine and fun to go out and look at quantum leaping. But I think if you're going to do any kind of quantum mechanics of anything, it's about how you manipulate the energy. And the energy comes from love. If you're in distress, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're in fear, you're envious, you're comparing yourself, all of those lower vibrational energies, you're never going to get to where you want to go. You're not going to be able to quantum leap. You're not going to be able to do any of that because it comes from the vibration of love. And when Zach said that love is I thought love was the highest vibration and she said authenticity was, which makes even more sense because that's when we're allowing our true authentic selves to come out. We're not putting on masks. We're not showing the world of look at everything's fine with me and you come home and you kick the dog and you beat up the kids. That's not authenticity. And I had somebody tell me this years ago that you're who you are. I mean, if you're a a witch, for a lack of better words, um, out in public, I'm the same way at home. I'm not, I don't put on a separate mask when I go out in the world. If I'm going to be that uh, a, crank, a cranky person, I'm going to be cranky. And that's just the way I am. And I got, people didn't like that and I didn't really care. But to me, it was, I was being authentic. Why should I put on a f happy face if I'm not feeling happy? Or if you're pissing me off and we're in a restaurant, and you're pissing me off, I'm going to say something. And I do because there's a boundary and we don't, we just allow people to like, we put on these masks, like everything's fine here. Keep on moving. Well, no, it's not. When it's not, it's not. When, when you feel that pain inside, you are not moving. And the fastest way to get to where you want to go is where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in 2025? I'm going to have a pretty big dream. I know that I had a big dream when I created this back when I bought this house that year in 2022, when we were just starting to really come out of COVID, I had some big dreams. Now I didn't accomplish all of them and I'm still working on them because that's how big they are. We think that we should have money, immediately because we have the microwave is too slow and we live in a 7-Eleven world. And that is not us. That is not life. We don't operate that way. I don't know what television did because television, I think, has a lot to do with it. I think the mistruths that are coming out on social media when people are like, oh, I'm making all this money and they're lying about it, but we're buying into it. And we think that they're happy when they're not happy. Everybody can put on a face, but what's behind the mask? And that's what you need to look at is what's behind the mask. What are you really feeling? What is the depth of you? Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Are you ready to step into your true potential? 
Kathleen Flanagan's Get Into Alignment session helps you break through blocks, balance your energy, and align with your highest self. Experience clarity, purpose, and flow like never before. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and unlock the power of living in alignment today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of the Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. So as I was saying, love is the key that allows us to propel ourselves forward. Love is the key that creates the life that you want. It also gives you that opportunity to be able to quantum leap or jump or go into a different timeline. And it's about the intentions because this isn't something you just play with because things can happen if you play. And I've, my sister was one of those that went out and played and things happened to her that weren't good things. I have experienced things. I've always been protected, but I have seen things. So it's not something that you just play with. Like it's a joke because this energy is real and there's, there are dark things out there, not evil things, but things that you may not be aware of at this point. And so that's why you always want to be protected. You always want to put the white light of protection around you. You want to make sure you have your guides, your angels, whatever it is that you use to protect yourself. Cause I always put the white light of protection on around me when I drive. And if I see somebody getting too close behind me, it's like, Michael, please send them back. And I will ask Michael, because I have been doing this for what, 40 years, 50 years, something like that. I've been asking for the white light of protection around me. And thank God I have been very protected in the crazy driving world that we have today. But where I want to go is when I plan on creating wherever I think I'm going, and I'm going to, I'm going to dream big on this one, but I'm also going to see what that energy, like if I can leap into that part of an energetic field to really understand that. Wanting something different than you have, you have to bring your vibration up because you'll never have it until your vibration comes up. And when I was reading this book last night, they were talking about this one gentleman. He wanted to quit his job. He was miserable. He wanted to start his coaching business, but he never changed. I mean, he'd come home and he would what have a couple of beers. He'd watch TV and go to bed and start all over again. And that, and it wasn't, it never changed. So what, and he hired a coach to help him. And what he did was it was baby steps. So when I'm always talking about baby steps, there's a reason I say baby steps because that little bit starts changing the trajectory of your life. So he was taking baby steps. So he would come home and instead of having beer, he just ate dinner and watched some TV or whatever. And then he started taking, you know, getting rid of the TV because we're habitual creatures. We get into a rut. That's what we do. And we can't just break those patterns that way. That's why baby steps make all the difference. That's why being present and being here now makes all the difference. You have to be present. Otherwise you're unconscious. You're a walking zombie. I think that's why Hollywood has so many zombie movies right now is because we're walking zombies. I mean, if you actually look at people driving out there, if they're not on their phone, they, they seem to be targeted and focused on something and they drive a hundred miles an hour, which I don't know where, how they're going to get someplace at a hundred miles an hour with the traffic, especially here in Denver, that is never going away. I don't know how they can drive that fast and they can weave in and out and they think that they're in some sort of a computer game and don't realize that they can kill people, including themselves. That's unconscious behavior. That is someone who's not present that are focused on, oh, I should have left a half an hour early and now I have to speed through traffic and see if I can kill somebody along the way. When did we become this society? That's what I wanna know. When did we become this? We are such an ungrateful nation on many levels because again, inside this book, 
what's the one thing you want to do too? You want to be grateful for what you have right here and right now. You know, how many people don't even, can't even brush their teeth in other countries? And we take it for granted. We take it for granted that we have food in the refrigerator. We take it for granted that we have big houses. In this book, the woman was talking about, she went to Russia and generally in Russia, there's three families living in like a little two, three bedroom place. They came to America and they said, one portion size that we get in a restaurant would feed the entire family for three days. That's something to think about. That we are excessive. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with it unless you're making it your top priority. I mean, being grateful for having what I have, I'm very grateful. And yes, there have been times when I thought I was, you know, it was bad. And my friends would be like, but you've got more than most people in two thirds of the world. And I had to get out of that negative mindset to realize that. And the minute I started going back into gratitude, things started changing. So gratitude is a big deal. And I'm, I'm very grateful for what I have. I worked at what I have. This was not, nothing I have was handed to me, nothing. I worked for every bit of it. I groveled, I did whatever I had to do to get to where I wanted to be. But it wasn't about groveling or anything. It was what I wanted to prove to myself. It was my own evolution. It was my way of discovering who am I? What do I think? How do I feel? What do I believe in? What makes me happy? I used to be part of a um, sales pros and they would like, what are you doing this week? And I would tell them and everybody would just like have to go take a nap after listening to what all the things I was doing because it was too much for them. And I said, well, I'm here to experience life. I'm not experiencing life if I'm sitting on in front of the TV or doing drugs or smoking pot or any of that. I'm not experiencing life. I'm a zombie. I'm being controlled by the government. I'm being controlled by the pharmaceuticals. I'm being controlled by everything but me. And I, that, that's the whole purpose. We're here to create. We're here to design. And when we choose to do that and really go through whatever those things are in our minds that's stopping us, that we stay and we're focused and we're driven and we're being tenacious, we'll get on the other side. I mean, that's what a lot of the great leaders did is they just kept believing, even though everything told them no. Even though they had a lot of obstacles and op opposition along the way, they kept believing. We don't know what's on the other side of fear other than no more fear until we find the next level of fear. And that's, and that's why quantum, I think there's so much people are talking about quantum physics and quantum jumping and quantum leaping and quantum mechanics. It's because it's just an energy and we manifest that we create that energy within us. We are an energetic being. We create through through energy. We create through emotions. When we connect our head and heart together, we can manifest anything. But then there's this self-limiting beliefs that come up and you sit there and you decide, oh my God, well, who says I can have this? What makes you think you're allowed to have this? Who do you think you are? You're just greedy and selfish and whatever the yada, yada, yada is. And it's up to you to say, I'm a child of God. I am worthy and deserving of anything that I want in my life. I am not selfish. I am growing and evolving. And I intend to share this and bring more to whatever, because if I'm going to have lots of money, I want to help. I want to have a cattery. Okay. I'm, I have five cats right now. Okay. Because we brought Marco in from outside and we are still trying to do the integration. This is so much fun. I can't even tell you. It makes me crazy. Most of my four cats, the residence cats, they are drama queens and kings. Marco hunts them because he wants to play with them, but he hunts them. Nobody's getting hurt anymore. Thank God for that. No more fur, no more cutting, scratching or anything. Thank God that's 
being done. But I'm thinking if I want to have a cattery, I have to learn how to integrate cats. And this one's a challenge. But Marco's staying because we love him and he's such a fun cat and he's so loving. He's just challenged with the other cats. And, you know, he, he has a little attitude sometimes where he's going to, I'm the dominant cat. And it's like, nobody has dominance in this house. So <laughs> it's a challenge. Okay. But I'm not going to give up on it because I see, I see the end result. I see that this can work. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience. And sometimes those are attributes that we all want to have within us anyways. It's just challenging sometimes when we get there. But who's to say that if I can get this cat in, who's to say that I'm going to have more cats? I'm going to have a facility to have these cats that take care of them and to nurse them back to health, to give them forever homes so they can be loved. I mean, cats are so cool. I mean, they are such fun animals. I just absolutely love cats. I love dogs too, but I love cats more. And, and with the lifestyle that I have, cats are way easier to take care of and manage than with a dog right now. But th the whole point is, is that if I'm having a bigger dream and there's a, this cat and I'm struggling with it, it's like, well, this is part of teaching me how to integrate cats. That's what this is about. That's how I look at it. It's, Usually it's not so bad, but this is, this is a lot different. And I can't tell you why other than he was feral. He was eight months. He's a kitten, but my cats, I don't know. Maybe they're prejudiced because he's orange. I don't know. I don't know what cats think. <laughs> so I make stories up. So that's what I do. So why not make a story up of what you want in your life? Why not rewrite your story? That's what I'm doing. I'm rewriting my story. Kind of like what Martha Stewart did. She rewrote her story. She could have had the life that her mom and dad had. She chose not to. She rewrote her story because she wanted something bigger, something better. But that meant she had to change who she was on the inside. That made she had to change her limiting beliefs. And then she had to do something about it. And then she was observant about paying attention in the world of what was missing and what did she need to fill. That's why Martha had this empire is because there was so much missing to make our lives full. I mean, having these amazing dinners and drinks and appetizers and food and presentation and flowers and herbs and all the things that she did was like she was bringing us back to when it was a simpler time in life, but not in a drudgery kind of way, but in a fun way. And that's what I believe in too, is going back into simplicity. And what was simplicity? Good food, organic food, homegrown food, going to the bakery and buying fresh bread. Not everything was processed like we do at the grocery store and we don't know what we're eating anymore. But going back into nature. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Feeling overwhelmed? Take a moment to reconnect with your inner peace. Join Kathleen Flanagan's powerful de-stress meditation designed to help you release tension, calm your mind, and restore balance. Just a few minutes can transform your day. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start your journey to tranquility today. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. So in essence, as I am learning more about quantum leaping, jumping, physics, mechanics, whatever you want to call the word. It's really is about utilizing everything around us. When I was reading this book, she talked about, well, if you're missing something, call in St. Anthony. Okay. I'm a recovering Catholic. And I thought, oh my God, I'm missing a book that I, a friend of mine sent to me and I don't know what happened to the book. I, I really, truly don't. So I said, oh, that's a good idea. I haven't asked St. Anthony for help in a long time. So I've asked St. Anthony to find the book for me. Now I haven't made any effort to look for anything at the moment. I know that's all going to change pretty soon because I'm going to be hosting Thanksgiving dinner and I decided I need to clean, dry clean my house because <laughs> Sal and I got in the basement over the weekend and got a lot of stuff 
put back in the crawl space. So as I'm opening the space in my unconscious part of my mind, as I look at it, because your basement is your unconscious part of your mind, I'm throwing away stuff. I'm reorganizing everything. We're creating space. We're making the basement something different than what it's been. Now we, we still have a ways to go, but we're making progress so much so that we are so excited to keep moving. But that little bit of doing in the basement, it was like there was this big shift inside of me and my mind and my body and how I felt of like, God, my house is like really dirty. It's not. But I think what it is, is that because I'm shifting and getting rid of old stuff in my thinking and how I'm being, that this is making that feeling of, well, I've got stuff up here to get rid of. Do I sell the spa stuff that I have? Do I want to go back into the spa and do things like that? I mean, I'm really, really assessing my life on it. I love doing, doing facials. I loved having my spa. But I don't know if that's what I want to do anymore by change, trading my time for money that way. It's just such a different world and I'm not sure if that's what I want. So I'm, it's making me think about, again, what is it that I want? Where do I want to go? How do I start minimizing more and getting rid of stuff that is almost like excess baggage? I mean, being an esthetician, I'm always going to be an esthetician. I'm always going to carry my license. And it was a big part of my life for a while. And I really loved doing it. I still do. It's just the times are just so challenging right now with people because they think that getting facials and having work done is like a luxury when it's not. It really is about your health. It really is. I mean, there's, I can't tell you how much stress you carry on your face. I can't tell you. And the reason I know is because the first time they put a hot towel on my face when I was in aesthetic school, I was like, oh, and it was the first thing that everybody did. They shut me up. It was like, oh, did you, she get a facial? Cause she's like not talking. Cause I always talk. And it was just an interesting experience. And when people like I, my gave my mother a facial for the first time in her life, she was 60 some years old. She never did anything like this for herself. And she got a facial because I had to do practicing at the school. And she's like, and I waited my whole life for this. For what reason? I mean, it was, it's that kind of an experience. But it's also good for your skin. It's good for your health. You're taking care of yourself. You're pampering yourself. It's kind of like massage. Massage is a double-edged sword. I mean, massaging is painful. It's, I don't know anybody who's ever had a relaxing massage. And if they did, they wasn't a very good massage therapist because when I get massages, they're beating me up because I'm carrying so much pain in my body and I want them to break the pain away. So, but that's with any kind of alternative health. It's about taking care of you and where do you want to be? And if you want certain things, I mean, do you plan to take care of yourself? Do you plan to have an exercise routine or get mis regular massages or whatever it is? I mean, those are things to think about for what do you want in the new year coming up? I'm going to be putting all of that down as far as, you know, I would love to get back into ballroom dancing. I just need to find a studio up here instead of going, you know, 50 miles down south because that made me happy. It made me happy. I loved dancing. So that's what I'm going to focus on. That's when you can quantum jump or leap is when you're happy, when you're feeling good, when your energy's up there, spirit is helping you. They're bringing things towards you. And that's what people need to understand is that you can have whatever you want, but it all starts with up here and then being grateful, expressing love, joy, and happiness. And you can have it all. But it's going to take some work because sometimes we have to go pretty deep inside to get the muck out so we can actually own that piece of us, that we can really come back into being that person. And I've spent a lifetime coming to the place that I'm in, and it's the best life I created, even though it sucked to be me most of my life. I wouldn't have done it any other way. It was the perfect way. And I'm not done. And the world hasn't seen the last of me either. I want to I want to thank you for joining me today 
And if you found any value here, be sure to share the link with your friends and family and please like and subscribe to the channel to get any updates on new episodes. And if you're struggling with anything or you want to learn more about what I talked about today, feel free to reach out and I can give you whatever support in helping you become more of that authentic self. And you can reach me at Brave TV at KathleenMFlanagan.com. My books, Dancing Souls, The Call, The Dark Night of the Soul and Awakened are up on Amazon.com and the KathleenMFlanagan.com site. And then be sure to visit KathleenMFlanagan.com for a list of the services and products that are being offered there. And you also have access to a three-minute de-stress meditation, which is great to start your day. It's great to end your day. It just puts you in a very peaceful, tranquil place. And that's what we want to do. Is And it raises your vibrational frequency as well. And I will see all of you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.